So a couple of weeks ago, I took my Orange TH30M to the shop for repair. I finally got the call yesterday that it's ready for me to pick up. I'm super excited. Let's go pick up the amp. Well, I'm at the car park of the music store and before I go in, even though I'm desperate to get my amp back, I thought I'd just tell you what the problem was with it. So the Orange TH30 1x12 combo amp, I got it about three and a half years ago when I moved to Germany and I got it for a great price secondhand. The person that had it, just simply didn't use it, didn't want it. I just had it lying around for years. I don't know how old the amp is and I don't think he knew either. So he gave me a really low price for it, basically just get rid of it for him. And after a few years, I mean, it worked fine for ages. I mean, after a few years, uh, it was last year I started noticing the problems. There was this kind of shh sound coming at its own will. So I couldn't predict when it would come. It just, while I'm playing, suddenly shh, uh, like in the background. And that's really hard to Google, like my amp is going, shh, what do I do? So I continued using it, but then last year the problem came, which meant I had to do something about it. On the clean channel, every time I had the volume knob, so on zero it was fine, but every time I turned it even the slightest millimeter higher, so just a tiny bit of volume, the amp would make this massive pop sound. It felt unsafe, so I turned it off and we were in a pandemic, so I left the amp uh, aside for ages. Until recently, discovering there's this place here, thought I'd uh, take it in, see what the problem was, and I'm gonna go pick it up now. So the amp is ready, and with the permission of the guitar store, I, I asked if I could just film in here, because we have this beautiful wall of guitars, and I just thought, you know what, we're in a guitar store, this is a guitar YouTube channel, let's, have a, let's do a bit of a window shopping. The first one that caught my eye, is this beautiful Hackstrom, beautiful guitar. Obviously my shadow's ruining the flame. Must be a veneer, there's not much 3D effect to it, but it's a beautiful pattern. Mini humbucker in the middle position. Need to look that up. Either way, stunning guitar. You've got loads of uh, Pacificas, Ibanezes, a couple of Schecters. So the next one that caught my attention was this Ibanez here, and I realized it's super affordable. It's only 199 euros. It's crazy how a lot of the Ibanezes I'm drawn to visually on the affordable end. I think they just do such a great job at this uh, price range. Obviously now there's the new AZ series which are super affordable as well. But this is a lovely model. Amazing fretwork. Oh, up here it was amazing. Still pretty good. Tiny bit scratchy. But, yeah, not too bad. I've played worse. I think the standout guitar for me this Pacifica, look at that beauty. Humbuck in the bridge, P90 in the neck position, white with a tilted shell. Pick guard, those of you that know my channel will have recognized I've got Tele in the same configuration, or the same colors rather. Graph Tech, String Trees, looks fantastic. So we've got a few more fenders down there, drawn to this finish as well. This is a very Ibanez heavy video. I don't normally play Ibanezes, but recently I've really been into them. I think it was the AZ series which first draw my attention to them as like a possible brand that I might enjoy playing. I'm not so into super thin necks, because of a traditional Ibanez, I don't play metal either, so traditional Ibanezes weren't always my thing, but that's starting to change. One more, another Pacifica, beautiful top on that, I'm sure it's a veneer, but it's lovely. Not too much 3D effect to the veneer, but um, let's see, oh there's a little bit when I move the camera up. Either way, stunning burst on that one. HSS configuration, which is really cool. I don't normally use, when it's HSS, I don't normally use the in-between position between the bridge and the middle. I prefer that on an SSS configuration. All right, enough of this. Let's go home and uh, test out the new amp. So the amp is in the car, and the kind people at uh, Music Center Schoenefield. Cool logo, is that Paul Kossoff? Might be Paul Kossoff. But nice people at Music Center Schoenefield let me film in there. So we'll see. We'll see if I uh, do a few more things in there. But uh, can't wait to take this home, try it out, and uh, see what I've been missing for the last however many months. So finally, my amp is back. It's working and it sounds so good. I really miss this amp. I actually forgot how it sounds. It had been so long since I used it. I think the last time I plugged it in was last summer. It was around about the same time I bought this. I bought this for my YouTube videos because I was filming somewhere else and I didn't want to carry this everywhere with me because it's so heavy. But now that I'm filming kind of in here, I need to somehow incorporate this into my YouTube studio slash living room. So it seems like the problem was just the volume pots here on the clean channel. 
that's been replaced and now it works absolutely fine. That shh sound I mentioned at the beginning of the video is no longer an issue. I plugged this in yesterday and didn't hear it at all for the whole time I was playing so hopefully that's a good sign. And the person that works in the store said that the valves or the tubes don't need replacing so that's great. They will at some point obviously as a tube amp but uh, I can avoid that cost for now which is a good thing. I'll kind of play out this video so you get a chance to hear this thing. I don't know if I'm going to do a full-on uh, demo of this amp, like a separate video, because unfortunately the TH30 combo is a discontinued model. You can get the TH30 head, but I don't know if it's the exact same amp. I don't know if they kind of upgraded anything or changed anything, but you're going to be hearing this a lot more on my channel now. I am so happy this is back. One thing about this amp though, especially if I'm going to be using it more often to record and just generally for jamming now that it's here, it's so loud. So I am so happy I've got the power attenuator from Harley Benton over there. Without the power attenuator, this thing is just too loud to be playing for long periods of time. So I mentioned earlier in a video, I bought this amp about three and a half years ago, just after moving to Germany. And initially I didn't want to buy it. So I thought that the overdrive channel, it just, it wasn't what I was used to at all. And it took a bit of getting used to until I suddenly fell in love with this sound because it is a distinct sound. Previously, I'd only been playing either clean Fender because that's what the rehearsal room in London had. And for gigs, I'd use whatever the venue would give me, which was sometimes really bad. Uh, once it was a Vox AC15, I think, so that was awesome, uh, but it was a bit of a lucky draw. So a distinct characteristic of this amp really took some getting used to. And all the pedals I was using beforehand sounded different through this amp. I had to kind of figure out how to get my sound out of it again. Eventually, I realized it's super easy. Crunch setting on the overdrive channel and a tube screamer, pretty much what I use on this one here. Anyway, I think this vlog's gone on long enough. I'm gonna play you out so you get a chance to hear this thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's the first time I've gone full vlogger mode. I've not really done that before on my channel and I wanna do more of it. Uh, so let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. That's all for me for now, till next time.